Good morning. My name is Reason A. Chandler. I'm the pastor of Jackson Street United Methodist Church, and I'm also the founder of Reason A. Chandler Ministries International. God bless you, saints of God. Uh, it's truly a pleasure and an honor to be able to worship with you today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for being our everything, for being our protector, for being our provider, for, for, for being our savior, our salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, Jesus Christ, and, and how through him, oh God, you, you were able to forgive us for our sins because of his sacrifice, because of his obedience, because of, 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 of his plan, Lord God, of salvation, your plan of salvation that, 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 that has brought us all to this place and brought us all together. Father God, we ask that by your spirit now that you will allow us to rejoice in this place and, and worship your holy name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So yes, we, we, we are worshiping today, and, and, and we're going to conclude our conversation uh, under the, the, the topic, God, Goals, Growth, and Gratitude. Uh, and we're still talking about goals because uh, we have not set any as of yet. We, we have not even talked about any particular goals. We just talked about how important they were and, and what they are, what it means to set a goal. It's because we have ambitions. It's because, because there's somewhere we want to get to or there's something we want to accomplish. Uh, uh, and, and so we are in a relationship, though, where, where, where now we must adhere to the Lordship uh, of our Savior, the, the Lordship of God. We must adhere to his instructions, right? Because because the place that we're going is a place that he's leading us, uh, he's calling us to. Uh, uh, and so we want to do the things that he instructs us to do in order to get there. Yeah, so, so let's talk about setting goals. Uh, let's talk about setting God's goal mm -hmm. for our life. How about, I wonder what that sounds like to some people. That, don't, that sounds like you got to give up too much, don't it? Yeah, well, you do. You have to give up some things. You have to let go. Uh, uh, and, and you've heard the song, right? It said, let go and let God. Um, he, was, he meant that literally. Let go and let God. And now, it may sound passive, but it's not. Right? It requires some work. Right? Uh, when you say that, uh, it doesn't just mean that you just sit in one spot, uh, like my man who laid by the pool for 48 years. No, that's, that's not what. That's not what. Mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's some work that needs to be done. Just like Paul came along later on and said, patience bring about a perfect work. Patience doesn't mean sitting in the waiting room, waiting for somebody to call you and say, okay, here you go, come on. No, no, you have to put in some work. That means you have to wait on the move of God and the move of the Spirit of God, and you have to wait on your ability and understanding of the Scripture that's instructing you on how to carry yourself and how to maintain your relationship with God and with each other. Yeah, wait. So so, so we set goals. Goals means objective. The, the object of, of a person's ambitions or efforts, uh, an aim or desired results. And so our results we want is, is a right relationship with God. And so, so what do you do? Uh, um, let me see. The, verse, the, best, the best verse, I believe, to, to, to support uh, uh, of the organization of our goals, now that we have a relationship with God, the, the organization of our goals and, and the establishing of our goals uh, um, what is the best scripture to support that? Well, what I came up with was 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, which tells us that all things must be done decently and in order. Decently and in order. You know, I've had this conversation before with quite a few folk about the order of things. Uh, the order of things are, are, are quite simplistic when it comes to our relationship with God. Um, it is... Yeah, God is at the top of that list. Uh, um, so, so we should just look to him. Um, the order of things uh, uh, is, is God, God, God. Yeah, that's, that, that makes it simple, doesn't it? Yeah, the order. So, so, so no matter what I'm doing, no matter what I want to do, no matter what I feel an urge to do or, or maybe I'm being led to do, uh, the first thing I want to do is make sure that it's God. I want to make sure that it's pleasing to God. I want to make sure that it's uh, 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 giving glory to God. Come on, somebody. I want to make sure there's some God in it, right? <laughs> you know how we do, right? You know how y'all know how we do. But 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 now 
uh, when, when, when you've heard this word, when you've heard these instructions, when you've heard these sermons that's inspired by the Holy Spirit, that's speaking to you, that's saying that, that, that okay, maybe, just maybe you, 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 your approach is a little bit off center. Uh, we have to recalibrate and, and get it straight. And so the goals that you may have in place, you may have to take them out. Some of the goals that you may have been living by for years and, 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 and you've done well. Uh, and it's done well for you. You may have to just revisit them and be sure. That's all I'm saying. Uh, uh, just be sure now that, 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 that they fall in line with Scripture, right? Cause, because Scripture needs to be, and, and, and it ought to be, the authority in our lives. Now, why? Now because the relationship that I have uh, uh, um, is with God. It's not, it's not with just my wife and my children and my community, but I have relationships with them as well. But, but, but I have a relationship with God. You know, God, the creator, God, God, God the maker, <laughs> God, the keeper and the sustainer, God, God, alpha and omega, you know, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, uh, this is the God that I, I'm saying and I'm telling people that I have a relationship with because of Jesus Christ. So, so, so the first thing on my list that, that had, to, had to be changed or it had to be replaced, uh, uh, um, I replaced it with prayer. First goal, prayer. Just praying, just praying without ceasing, just about everything. Because the Bible declares that we don't know what to pray for, or how we should pray. Uh, Jesus even declared it to the disciples and, and he taught us uh, how to pray um, uh, in, in the text. I think it was Matthew 6. 33, where they, where they talk about uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all of the things will be added unto you, right? So, so, so in that scripture or in that text alone, then, then how do I seek God? What are some of the things that I do to seek him? Do I just get in the car, go for a ride and look for him? Uh, do I go on the internet and search for him? What do I do? I look on my phone. Uh, uh, um, do, I, do I go, you know, to Jerusalem to look for him? Uh, no, 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 no. Prayer is where you can find it. Hallelujah, somebody. If you just get on your knees, if you just set aside time to, 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 to talk to him, and, and don't just talk to him, but, but after you've said what you had to say, uh, um, listen to what he has to say. Ah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, listen to what he has to say. Because he has some information that's gonna help transform your life. And not just your life, but even the life of your children and your children's children. So, so through the life of prayer, uh, he will reveal things unto us. If we make ourselves, when we make ourselves available unto him. Huh. Oh my Lord. And, and, and even if he says nothing, mm, you have better spent your time sitting before him than you could spend your time doing anything else. Even if he says nothing, just sit there. Uh, hallelujah, somebody, until he does. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so the first goal, prayer. The next goal, uh, fasting. Bringing your flesh under subjection to the spirit. Our flesh is, woo, whew, strong and strength in this flesh. Uh, you, you, might not, you don't have to admit it. I, I'm telling you, I'm not asking you. It, it, when, when I think about the things that, that my body has been through in, in life, the, the surgeries that, that, that God has brought me through and healed me of uh, appendicitis, gallbladder removal, two hip replacements, both knees scoped, I've cracked my wrist, broke my nose, 32 stitches in my... This flesh is tough. And sometimes we take it too lightly. We, 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 we think that the flesh is just going to chill, right? Because we've decided to live our lives a different way that the flesh is going to be like, oh, okay, that's cool. No, the flesh is going to resist. And so we have to bring the flesh under subjection. We, we, we have to, to curve its appetite. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Uh. And, and, and more so in, yeah. Ooh, okay, we're not, I'm, mm -mm. that's another conversation right there. Uh, when it comes to food, though, that's one way uh, we can bring the flesh under subjection. Um, turn down your plate, pray, spend time with God. Mm. Another thing, another goal should be, uh, uh, and, and this is something that I'm going to suggest that should occur every day. 
every day. Every day. Pray, fasting, studying scripture. Studying scripture. Because what? The knowledge of God and its application, right, is important to us. Listening to the voice of God, knowing his voice, and, and, and is knowing God, it's relational. So, so, so we want to at least pray every day. Fasting, okay, maybe not every day, all right? Um, but you can for a couple of hours, for three hours, just to get in the practice of fasting, Intentionally, I'm not talking about the fasting where you go to sleep and sleep for eight hours and you have an eight and you go, oh, I'm hungry. Okay, I know that's fasting and break your fast breakfast. That's what we do every morning. We break up. Okay, I get that. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you get the breakfast to break the fast, you say, guess what, body? This morning, we're not breaking nothing. We're going to keep on fasting because I need to hear from God. Hallelujah, somebody. And you making too much noise. <laughs> you making too much noise and, and I need you to be quiet and, and all that growling and grumbling going on needs to stop amen somebody and, and so 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 this is this these are the goals uh, that need to take place uh, uh, as God will give us the other goals that we need to accomplish his purpose for our life yeah but we're gonna talk about that on the other side uh, um, when we talk about growth my lord and so now, now, and now, listening also for God, which which I already mentioned is a part of the praying process. Uh, but 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 not just listening then, uh, um, just reading Scripture and let's listen. Now let's read Scripture and and let's hear what God is saying to us from Scripture. Not not taking our ideas to Scripture, but 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 what is it that God wants us to glean? From the scripture. Yeah, because the scripture has been written a long time ago. Hallelujah, somebody. We're just coming up behind it, and, and, and God is still dropping nuggets. Hallelujah, somebody. been dropping nuggets for years now, and, and, and here I am, hallelujah, in 2022, and he's still dropping nuggets. I can still glean mm, 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 from the field that has already been harvested. Hallelujah, somebody. There's still something there. And, and so in order for us to be able to get it, our relationship with God has to be in tune. And, and in order for our relationship to stay in tune, these goals need to be in place. And we need to practice these goals. And, and because if you don't practice the goals that you set, what will you have to come back and measure and determine if you are growing or not? My Lord. Hmm. God first. His goals. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so then what will happen is, as we're sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit now, you see now, now you see what happens because of those goals, we now become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We, 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 we're not just depending on, or, or as scriptures say, we're not just leaning to our own understanding. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're not doing that, but, but in all our ways, uh, uh, because of these goals, because of the ambition now to have a, a better relationship with God. Hallelujah, somebody. You need to understand that I'm going to do whatever it takes, hallelujah, to accomplish this. Because I want to know what God's purpose is for my life. Not what my purpose is or, or what other people's purpose is for my life. But what is God's purpose for my life. And, and even though they don't know it, hallelujah. But if I follow what God's purpose is, it'll be better off even for them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And so... In my relationship with God, being sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the influence of, of my actions are not the flesh. It's not, it's not the flesh that's, that's, that's inspiring me to, to do the things that I do. Uh, it's, it's reward, but it's, it's the spirit. It's the spirit for the things of the flesh are carnal and temporal. But the thing of the spirit are eternal. Mm. They will be able to see the growth. They will understand why there's growth. And who is the one who causes the growth? God bless you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us all that we need. 
Not only all that we need, Lord God, but you even promised that you would give us the desires of our hearts. Mm. Our hearts desire you, God. We desire your favor. We desire your forgiveness. We desire your faithfulness. We desire your protection. For all these things, Lord God. And we thank you that you're not like man. Thank you, Lord God. Because you have promised to give us the desires of our heart. No matter what. Help us, O oh God, to be recipients of this great gift of love, life, and laughter. Continue to bless us, O oh God, to be your church. To receive those that you are sent. They might come to know you in the pardon of their sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, children. Until we come together again, continue to pray, continue to seek God's face. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And present us from present us faultless with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be all majesty, glory, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. And all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Go now and serve God with great joy. I love you.